The theory of quantum physics has existed and developed for more than a hundred years, and in that time it's been extremely, ridiculously successful at predicting how the universe around us behaves. But there's one small problem with it. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Hello there, my name's Bart, and in this video we'll be looking at yet another one of quantum theory's confusing aspects. The fact that we need to interpret it in order to make sense of the mathematics. So, if you enjoyed this video then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. Now, first things first, quantum theory, like other physics theories, is based on a series of assumptions or postulates. The reason for this is that physics theories are models or frameworks of math that let us begin by assuming certain ideas are true and then exploring what that must mean. Then we can do experiments to compare the predictions made by the math to real life in order to figure out whether one of our theories is a good model for the universe. And if there's a good match between experiment and theory, then there's a pretty good chance that the assumptions we made at the beginning apply to the real universe and not just to our mathematical models. Great, so let's take a look at a couple of the assumptions or postulates of quantum mechanics. Firstly, any system we study can be described in its entirety by a mathematical function called the wave function. So let's say there's a system we want to study, maybe a single electron in free space, or maybe a set of protons and neutrons found within the nucleus of an atom, as well as the electrons completing that atom. Each of these will have their own wave function, psi. Psi describes each system as a whole, rather than just individual particles, and psi contains all the information we can know about our system. It also depends on position and time, so the exact value of the wave function depends on what region of space that we're considering and what time we're looking at as well. Now, on the surface, it just sounds like I'm saying that groups of particles can have this strange wave function attached to it, and this is what we do all our math with if we want to find something out about our system. And that's not too surprising, considering that's kind of the whole point of quantum mechanics. But this postulate that we've just looked at also introduces another link between real systems and their math. It says that if we want to find some probability, let's say the likelihood that we will find our electron in this region of space, then we take the square of our wave function, technically the square modulus, and we find the area under the wave function squared graph that corresponds to that region of space. This area gives us the probability of finding our electron here, between these two points. So we're more likely to find our electron between these two points, for example, than these two. So why is this true? Well, that's the postulate. We assume that it's true. And we assume it's true because the math really does work out that way. If we calculate the wave function for a particular system, the area under the square modulus of the wave function really does happen to correspond to the probability of finding our particle in that region of space. Every experiment we've ever done on this has confirmed it. But there isn't an obvious way to explain why the math corresponds to the physics in that way. Quantum mechanics doesn't give us a nice answer, at least not yet. And quantum mechanics is based on a handful of other such assumptions that we have to make simply because we need some way for the math to correspond to aspects of reality. And once we find these links, the math perfectly seems to predict how our systems will behave in real life. So before we continue, I'd like to just say, if you're enjoying this video so far, please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, it really helps the channel out. Thanks. Another example of this is a postulate that links together measurements we can make on the real system with these mathematical objects called operators. If we make a measurement on our real system, the mathematical equivalent is applying a particular operator to the wave function of the system. In other words, writing this is equivalent to making a measurement. And what I mean by that is that the result of this mathematically corresponds to what we would see after making a measurement in real life. But why an operator should be equivalent to a measurement, we're not so sure yet. So, with quantum mechanics being based on so many strange and difficult to explain assumptions, why do we stick with it? Normally, physicists would scrunch up such a theory and throw it into a metaphorical black hole. But there's one reason that quantum mechanics has stuck around, which we've already discussed. It works. 
It does very little to tell us about the structure and the order of the universe, at least in any way that makes sense to our puny human minds. But mathematically, every single prediction it's ever made has matched closely, if not perfectly, with every experiment ever conducted. So far, we found no evidence to contradict it. And boy, have we tried. Quantum mechanics has withstood test after test and stuck its weird wave-particle tongue out at us every single time. And our postulates have already touched on the idea that we need to interpret quantum mechanics, the interpretations being how mathematical ideas and objects relate to real life. For example, the operators corresponding to measurements. The most common interpretation of quantum mechanics is known as the Copenhagen interpretation. Another important thing to note is that the theory of quantum mechanics seems to break concepts that formed important cornerstones of earlier physics. For example, in Einstein's relativity, he established that if two objects are a certain distance away from each other, then information can only be sent as fast as light, or other EM waves, can travel between them. In other words, they cannot communicate instantly. However, in quantum mechanics, systems of particles separated by large distances can seem to change together at exactly the same time. For example, if someone changes something about particle A here, then particle B also instantly changes, rather than the change occurring a few moments later, once information is transmitted to it from particle A. Now, I've made a whole video about this idea, as well as ways scientists try to resolve this problem. Check it out up here if you're interested, and I'll also link it in the description. The reason I bring this up, though, is because some other interpretations of quantum physics try and resolve this issue of spooky action at a distance. One such interpretation is known as the transactional interpretation of quantum mechanics, and the idea is that every part of a system that we study constantly emits wave function-like waves both forward and backward in time. The thing that we observe gets decided when a wave moving forward in time meets a wave moving backward in time, and they take part in a quantum handshake of sorts. This exchange of information basically decides which experimental outcome we will see in each instance. Therefore, this gets rid of spooky action at a distance by introducing the idea of waves traveling through time. Nothing magically happens instantly. The outcome was, or is, or will be decided when the waves from the future meet the waves from the past. Now, I've oversimplified here, basically massively, so I'll leave some resources in the description if you'd like to find out more about this idea. Anyway, we've also seen that quantum mechanics is inherently a probabilistic theory. The theory only tells us the different possible results we could measure if we were to do an experiment, and the likelihood of each one. It won't tell us exactly what will happen in an experiment. Put another way, if we do the same experiment over and over, each time we might get different results, and the weighting of the results will be in line with the theoretical predictions of quantum mechanics. But another interpretation of quantum mechanics somewhat resolves this issue. It's known as the many worlds interpretation. It's quite popular, so many of us might have heard of it already. The idea is that every time something happens, the universe branches off so that all possible outcomes do actually occur, one in each universe. For example, if I take a test, the universe splits off into loads of different possible results, some where I pass and some where I fail. Now, because I studied hard for this test, the large majority of the universes are the ones where I pass, and only some are the ones where I fail, meaning me, or at least this universe's version of me, has a high chance of being in one of the universes where I pass. So, we've looked at a couple of unusual interpretations of quantum mechanics, and they are quite interesting to think about. The trouble is that currently, these other interpretations don't really put up any testable ideas. We don't have the ability to test, for example, if these mathematical waves are really being sent forward and backward in time. So, they stay as theoretical concepts until we can come up with ways of gathering actual experimental evidence about them. As always, of course, I've simplified some ideas down into the ways that I think about them, meaning they probably don't cover all the details that we would get if we were to study them rigorously and mathematically enough. But I find them really useful ways of visualizing and understanding ideas. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. A huge thanks to all of my Giga patrons and all the others over on my Patreon page. That's linked in the description if you'd like to support me on there. And finally, please do check out my merch, also linked in the description. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon.